I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same process with some pinks just because I really liked those. So I want to show you something. The pinata senorita magenta and the raspberry ranger are literally almost identical colors, just so you know. Okay, so I'm gonna use up my ranger one, but almost identical. I think I'm gonna use one of those. And then this one is Pinata Pink. It's their new pink color, I believe. And then this is Flamingo, but it's got more red to it, so I might avoid that. And then I might use the Pearl Enchanted one, which I didn't put a sticker on, but it's a pretty pale pink, but it's got mica in it. So I think I'm going to use one of these two. So the Ranger Raspberry or the Senorita magenta enchanted and pink I think I'm gonna do three I don't know maybe I'll pick one more color maybe I'll pick a blue and that way I do a little less of it and that way when it mixes in with these I'll also maybe get purple tones or maybe a yellow might look cool and I'll get orange tones Ooh. That might be cool. I don't have much yellow going on. Um, so there's a couple different yellows that I have. And a couple of them are really more like how do you, golden yellows. So the dandelion is actually pretty bright. This is alchemy. This is their pearl one. This one's pretty bright. This sunshine yellow is actually more like... Like a... I don't know, like a golden yellow. It's not like a bright yellow. So I'll probably use a dandelion. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, and I'll show you them. Here are these colors. So again, raspberry. Dandelion. Might have added a little too much, but that's okay. The pearl enchanted. And pink. So I'm going to make it with these colors, and like I said, I'm going to add a little more mica powder, and I might add a little more silver than we did, but I just wanted to show you them raw the way they are, and I'll probably do the same exact thing, make a few pendants, and then make a couple lentil beads. I wanted to uh, show you guys what these look like when they're baked. So this is the obviously the slab one. They're still warm, so I gotta wait for them to cool, but I'm gonna sand them. This one I did back. So I added more mica, but a pink mica this time. You can probably see it shimmering. And more flakes. I also added some of the pink foil. Um, the dark pink, the light pink, and silver. And then this is like a swirled one. See how that yellow gave me some kind of orange? I'm thinking a lot of this paint will sand right off here, but I thought it looked cool anyways, too. And then here's this one. So I chose a really pink part. But look at that paint down in there. S swirls you get. This side got really orange. Isn't that cool? Just by adding a little bit of yellow. Because it's translucent, it's going to shine through. So I'll get these sanded. I'll show you what they look like, too sanded and buffed I should say. I think I'm going to do one other thing here. So I have this left of the pink and I have this much of the blue which I won't use at all but when I look at the sides of these I really like the way they look. So I think I'm going to try something so I can get the side view visible. More like a Bargello maybe. I don't know what I'm going to do but I think I'm going to try something. So pretty much just taking equal slices of each and I'm going to stack them next to each other. Maybe on a separate tile it might be easier so I can move it out of my way. Pretty much just lay your slices down. Yeah. I'd like a straight edge off of this one, but I can use this for the outside. For the, like... here for the end. 
No, but that won't work. I need to put it this way. And then this way. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I see what needs to happen here. This blade is pretty fe flexible. I don't know if a rigid blade will work better. I don't know. I'm just going to play with my scraps here, I think. trying to get them to the same height, but they're probably not going to be. I can, but the bottom will be. If I keep them upright, the bottom will be the right height. What's against the tile, you know what I mean? Because I like the way these sides look. I think they just look a little different than the top, and I might as well try something, right? It cannot hurt to play. This one's really tall, so I'm going to slice this one off now. Again, keep these scraps because you can always roll them back up. I almost think I might, I like some of the yellow mixing, like some of it looks really cool. Like I wanted more of this color, not this color, I don't know. Like some of the yellows don't look great, so maybe if you don't like it, keep it out. I wanted more of this bright orange, not, you know, when it mixed was what I was hoping to get, but it didn't always appear that way. So anyways. Maybe if I did this again, I would probably keep the yellow out of the pink batch. I really love the way this thing looks. I really, really think it looks cool. And I think this may look cool too. I might as well try to do something with it. I really liked the end look, the way the ends look. So I'm kind of treating it like, almost like I would a Bargello. They're all, they're both on setting zero on my pasta machine. I put them both through the pasta machine. So they're both the same thickness. It's just cutting them to the right height. I do like that. I think, and it looks brighter in real life than on camera, but <clears throat> I was like, you know what? I'm going to try something else with this and see if I can achieve in a cool effect from these ends. Now when I look up close, that pearl pink that I used, you can see it, let's see, I don't know if, can you see it down in the light pink? See how shimmery that is? Same thing with this one down in there. That's not the mica, that's the pearl alcohol ink. It reminds me of at Claire's when I was like a teen, you used to buy these squishy like bath things that would like slide out of your hand, they were like, looked like like a round circle and it had a hole in the center and you could just keep that used to have some shimmery liquid in it and it reminds me of that so I'm gonna make a stack of these until I have it wide enough to cut a pendant and then I'll come back and see if I want to change it a little bit more too so I have a piece of parchment I'm gonna burnish this out a little bit now if you have some hopefully what's on the tile the base part is even but if you have any here that are sticking way up high, you may want to try to slice it to make it a little even because otherwise your lines will get smushed. 
Now I picked this oval cutter off to the side here and I can totally, uh, I was thinking about doing something else with it like I did uh, before and like other people have done, but I almost want to keep these stripes too. So for part of this, I want to show you what you can do with it, but part of it I want to keep striped. So I'm just kind of trying to get them all to the right height just in case I didn't. Because once you go to burnish, if one's sticking way up high, it's going to smear over onto the other ones. That's about good. Just go with your stripes though. Burnish with your stripes. Kind of get it warmed up a little bit. And I'm going to lay this, I think, on some backing clay, depending. Yeah, probably just to make sure it's solid. But I'm going to use up here first. Now, if you're sure your ends aren't sticking together, you can always take two of your blades and really kind of compress your stack together. Like that. But burnish it well and do the ends well because we always tend to, or I do, tend to miss the ends and the sides. I tend to do a lot in the middle and then not so much on the sides. Use your fingers and tell what you're doing with your fingers. You can feel if it's getting more even with your fingers. So with one of these, I'm going to cut a piece out. And then I want to show you what you could do with the other. This stuff, if you cut an even end off, I don't even just think I used my blade in, nope, oh well. You could take these, cut even strips, or try to get the same thickness, doesn't need to be perfect, and checker these. So do blue to pink, pink to blue. Squish them together. If you want to. I thought I liked the stripes better, but I figured I could show you. With this, you can also do something like this, which I've showed in a video before on a different one. sticks to your blade, but sometimes it does not want to. Like that, if you wanted to. And see what that gives you once it's baked. You know, it could look cool. Could look cool for sure. Might not. I don't know. If I do have some smaller cutters, I could make like a mini one. Like an earring size. I don't tend to wear a lot of big earrings at work. Just because they get caught on my masks. Which is why I tend to just wear pendants at work. Um, because earrings get caught on my face mask. So, but you can make all of this. Anything I make, you guys can make earrings, bracelets, any veneers. Whatever you want. Bowls, dishes, trays. So always feel free to use half of these techniques in other forms, you know. I don't tend to make a lot of square beads. So, 
that's an or um, round beads that's another thing I don't tend to do because I don't like to make full necklaces I like just to wear mine on a simple collar or a simple uh, cord and I may roll these up into a lentil bead to see what I get I wonder if I don't think I have anything that small but I kind of like to bake it to see what it looks like Burnish it out though so it's stuck together. Now, again, the base side should be flat, you know what I mean? It should be. I'm trying to see if I have a little dinky cutter, like a really, really small one. That could fit this. Really, really small though. Just to see what it looks like when it's baked, you know? It might be super cute when it's baked. I get you this one fit. That one will be too big. Because I may still have enough to make another one of these checkered ones if I go, oh, I like that actually. bigger one to make myself a pendant if I like it. I don't know. I'll get these baked. I'll sand and buff them the same way I did the other ones. And then if I like it, I might do one of these. I actually kind of do now that I'm looking at it cut out. So I think I might make one a big one of those. I think I might. And I'll be back when I get them all sanded and resined. Okay, these are done. I just want to show you one thing. Yes, I'm wearing a glove so I don't ruin. I just did my nails. But this little one right here is tiny. It's under an inch. Maybe three quarters of an inch. Tiny, tiny. I mean, it's like the size of my... A little bigger than my thumbnail, okay? You can still use this skill sander on small stuff. Now this glove. I have this, oh, this glove on upside down, so it's kind of big. So I don't want to hit my thing, but I need some more water on it. But you can still use this on small stuff. Those bowls I made. So because it's got this sharp point, you can really get in there with different things. So I just wanted to mention that. So I haven't resined yet, but I did want to show you them after they're baked and uh, buffed and sanded and buffed. Now what I might do still with the rest of the blue I have, I may just make a sheet just to see what the sides look like but with one solid color. Just why not, right? Because it does look different than the other side of it. So I may make a sheet because this, hang on, I just got sanding stuff all over it. But it does look, I think, different than this. They're longer and skinnier. But I don't know, I may make a total sheet just out of the blue, but using the ends. So here's this one, obviously. So here's the front, the back. I haven't decided what's the front back. Now I'm gonna show you in a second what these look like in the light, because they may make an awesome candle holder. I may make a set of earrings, I don't know. Especially if they catch the light, I'll show you in a minute. These are ones that I did the um, I put 
with the scraps to the lentil out of them. Here's the other side. And then I made two little ones as well. Um, I think. So this is the bright sides of them. I still think I would have added more mica and more metal flake because I really didn't get that too much. But I think I'm going to make a set with these here. Maybe a set with these here. I don't know if I'm going to hang it like this. Or if I'm going to hang them with the skinny part up. Probably this side. I don't know what side I like better. I cut that. I didn't do it. Sh oh, this is the one I did straight. But these ones I kind of did at diagonal. I did have to run this through the pos this one through the pasta machine because I didn't have enough. You can see the squares aren't as perfect. But let me show you what this looks like in the light. Hang on. So. That cool. They make an awesome candle holder. Or like wind light catcher, like in your window. These are the little earrings, which I actually think may look cool if they do catch the light on someone's ear if their hair is up. I didn't back them. And then the Makume Gane, or uh, the lentil bead ones kind of look like this. So nothing major, but the square ones I think really look cool. Definitely look cool. And the line one. And the light. So, I don't know. You see this one? It's got sanding dust on it. See, that one doesn't show up a lot. Let me see if the, oh, I don't have a pink one that I didn't, oh yeah, I do, hang on. It's kind of thick to show up. But anyways, I definitely like when they're checkered. That might make a cool candle holder. So I just wanted to show you that, okay. Okay, so the pendants I'm gonna keep are these ones, and I've already hung three of them. I drilled holes and everything, but I don't know if I'm gonna wear these two as much, just because I prefer these three. So I figured I'd show you them. And then um, I made two pairs of earrings, but I'm also gonna show you how to drill the holes. These are actually like the second pair of earrings I've ever made. But I actually think they look pretty. So as far as the necklaces go, Here's one. And the pink one. And then my other blue one. And then I wanted to show you the ones, I've already showed you these, but so this, you know how I made the striped ones, right? This is one where I just took the, the edges and you can totally, they look totally different just from the edges to the front. Now resining really brings out everything, every time. It's like a magnifying glass, oh, got fingerprints on it, but it really does. So if you use your edges, that's, it gives you more of a look like this than this so play around with it you know we have the stripes we have the checkers 
you know, and like I said, when I held this up to the light, this was actually really cool looking. So I made two pairs of earrings. These ones I've already finished, which maybe I can hang them on this leather cord and show them to you. And then I want to do the other set. These, I think if they catch the light, if someone's hair is up, I think they'll look really pretty. And maybe when I wear them, I'll take a picture of myself because it is Sunday and I look a mess and I'm not going to show you them in my ears. But I'll take a picture of myself and post it on Facebook the first time I wear them. So let's uh, do the other ones. Now I do have four millimeter jump rings and that's what I'm using on these. And I also did two jump rings so they have more of a, a movement. So anyways... So I started drilling the hole, but I haven't done this one yet. So again, using my um, pin drill or hand drill with the spinny base, so you can just put it in your palm, twist your fingers. We, move all this out of the way, are going to drill a hole. So I literally just figured where the center was and made a big tick mark so I could then look at it and make sure I thought it was in the center. So then I'm gonna put it down on my board just because it's easier when it's on your board and drill the hole, but you can't see it when I do that, so I'm gonna pick it up. Be careful when you feel it coming to the other side because this can stab the heck out of you. These little ones, for sure. If you're putting pressure on your fingers back there, I do like this brighter backside, but they didn't match as well. So I figured this side matched better, these two here, than those two. I really like this one, but it didn't quite match well enough for me. So that's why I'm doing these side, this sides. Um, but I still think they'll look cute once they're hung. You'll be able to see the backsides too. So then just going from my smallest to the biggest size I need for these. And if I want the jump ring to be able to move in there, I need to get a bigger hole. Is that the hole? Yeah, I think that's the largest size I went up to. I might have went one more, but. I believe this is the size I used on my the ones I just did. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so now we have holes. And then I have these, like I said, four millimeter jump rings that I don't use often. But these are thin enough. They should be thin enough for this to work. Oh, I'm going to need four. And then I also have earring backs. Now these can be opened and closed, these earring backs here, I don't know if you, it's kind of like a jump ring. I just pinch them all the way closed because they are hard to open without twisting your thing. So just put your jump ring through it. Just make sure they're good and closed. I also bent these a little bit because they stick out too far towards my e my um, head and they, I feel this part touching my head. So I, kind of always pinch mine in when I wear them okay so I got two bent bent nose pliers here I'm gonna grab my four millimeter jump ring with the opening at the top and we're gonna twist front to back or back to front not pulling apart we're twisting like that slide your piece through and then I'm gonna close this one sure it's lined up also make sure it looks even from the top sometimes they don't and you can give them a little, a little pinch if not and then we'll open this one see what I mean from the top like this you see how one's way up higher than the other one one side so sometimes they're like that open that one front to back 
slide this guy through and also slide your thing on and then close it and again make sure it's the right height one is still sticking up higher than the other so then I'll just give it a, point, a little pinch it's harder when they get smaller Make sure my resin side is facing forward. Okay, let's do the other one. Oh, was this the one I pinched or was this the one I... I want to make sure the earring part is closed all the way. This earring jump ring wire. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this one. I'll show you them both. Again, open. Slide it through. So again, I'm using four millimeter jump rings, just smaller ones, but your pendant has to be thin enough for this to be able to work. If they're too thick, you'll have to use a bigger diameter jump ring. I don't know what gauge wire this is, but the diameter's four. Okay, open the second one. Slide it on. Make sure your ear wire, you know, is facing backwards for your resin. My resin's, oop, oop. So my resin's on this side here. So when you put your ear wire on, I wouldn't want it facing towards my resin. You know, make sure it's facing your back. And you can always flip it around if you have, happen to mess up. But. And then. sure it's closed there we go let me show you these two and I have little rubber stoppers that I put on the back of all my earrings so there's those ones and you can really see the mica in person on camera you can't see it quite well but in real life you can on that. that was just a small little air bubble but yeah in real life like I can see the mica shimmering down in there can't really on camera but either way so I got these and these and all of these other ones that are going to go in my box that I could resin later and use later if I want to. So anyways, that was kind of fun. Actually, it was fun enough that I'm thinking about doing another color. <laughs> I really am because I, it's an easy one, it's a fun one, and it's kind of fun to sand it and go, ooh, look what I'm getting in there because you really don't know. You have no clue what you're getting. And again, when you hold like the earrings up to the light, I'm hoping when they're in someone's ear, you get that shimmer through right there. I think it looks pretty, and they'd probably look cool, like I said, as a sun catcher. So anyways, that is pretty much it.